Swim F1H2O World Championship returns to Evian for the 21st Grand Prix of France, round two of the 2017 season. A historic and world-renowned spa and holiday destination, Evian Le Bain has attracted the international creme de la creme for centuries and continues to be a favorite destination for royalty, celebrities and jet setters. Evian is a name synonymous with water. The melting snows of the Alps nourish a verdant and flourishing pastoral environment where cows and sheep graze on lush green meadows by idyllic bubbling streams, an Arcadian wonderland with such clean and wholesome water and air that international sports teams come to train here on the off season. Evian was one of the world's premier destinations during the Belle Epoque and the Roaring Twenties, and it continues to be a major attraction with its incredible architecture, the all-wood La Grande Jaloc Concert Hall, the Clock Tower, and some of the finest restaurants and cuisine at the foothill of the Alps. There couldn't be a more perfect setting for the world's premier marine motorsport racing series as the crowds once again flock to the shores of Lac Le Mans in their thousands to watch the Grand Prix of France. The locals get to cheer on French three-time and defending world champion Philippe Schiap of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. And for those who have the nerve and the stomach for it, there's the F1 H2O two-seater where you can get a first-hand experience of the hair-raising thrill that is F1 H2O racing. First, let's take a look at what happened in round one in Portimao, Portugal. The 2017 UIM F1 H2O season kicked off under rough and windy conditions on the Arad River in Portimao, where Sean Torrente of Victory Team won pole position ahead of teammate Ahmed Alhamali, who set the second fastest time before crashing out in rough conditions late in the BRM qualifying. Starting from third place on the pontoon, Philip Schiap got the jump on Eric Stark at the end of lap one to move into second position behind Torrente. Shiap gave chase for nine laps before Torrente broke down, giving Shiap the lead, with Eric Stark of Team Sweden chasing the Frenchman in third. Celio surged from ninth through the field to fourth behind Stark. Behind Celio, a battle ensued between Benevente and Marcelec. Marcelec taking out a turn buoy four laps from the end to send Benevente up into fourth. Stark's race came to a disappointing close just two laps from the end, although he managed to salvage eighth. That moved Celio into second position, Benevente into third, Marcelec fourth. But a post-race penalty to Marcelec meant Corella would finish fourth, an incredible result considering all the misfortune they had to endure. The Grand Prix of Portugal winner was CTIC F1 Shenzhen China driver Philip Schiap, runner-up Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team, and on the podium in home waters, Duarte Benevente to the delight of the Portuguese crowds. There were nine teams and 20 drivers from 12 countries competing in the Grand Prix of France. Thank you, sir. The man in the limelight is, of course, Philippe Schiap of CTIC F1 Shenzhen China team. He is seeking to become only the second man in history to get a fourth consecutive world title. Though he's off to a great start coming off a win in Portimao, his previous two outings on Lac Le Mans have resulted in heartbreak, unable to finish both races. The driver wants to break the curse once and for all and win his first ever Grand Prix in France. Sammy Celio, who won his first ever Grand Prix in France in La Rochelle in 2007, will be a tough challenger for Schiap. The Finnish Mad Croc Baba racing driver has had a good start to the year with a runner-up finish in round one and has his eyes set on championship wins. <laughs> This year. 
Celio's teammate, Philip Roms, got his best ever career F1 H2O result here last year with a runner-up finish. He wants to repeat his performance here in Evian. A man who has been so close to winning a first world title for three years running is Sean Torrente of Victory Team. His brilliant run of consistency in 2016 came to an end in Portimao, and the American will be keen to get his campaign back on track with a solid result, if not a win in Evian, in his pursuit for that elusive first world title. The defending Grand Prix of France winner and three-time consecutive world champion is Alex Carella. Last year, the Italian ace won the Poland race double here on Lake Le Mans. But has Team Abu Dhabi resolved the engine issues that saw them break four of five engines in round one? And can Carella get back to his winning ways? There's a third driver joining Maverick F1 racing team, Beranger Robar, completing an all-French lineup alongside Cédric de Guin and Amaury Jossom. And Blaze Performance driver and 12-time Grand Prix champion Francesco Cantando has a brand new Blaze boat with some radical new design features seeking to overturn a dismal record on Lac Le Mans. Lac Le Mans is a notoriously tricky course with unpredictable winds and big rollers, making it particularly challenging to find the right setup and negotiate those shifting conditions over a 45-lap race. Formula One powerboat legend Renato Molinari is now a regular in the paddock with Victory Team. The 18-time world champion is also a world-renowned boat builder, and one of his classic hulls from the 80s was on display at Evian. Let's talk about the difference between Formula One of the 1980s and Formula One as we are today. And there are a vast amount of differences, both on the safety side and obviously on performance. This is a typical Molinari boat built in about 1981 and as you can see it's built from wood from the point of view of engines. Evil Rule came up in 1980 with a V8 engine, 450 odd horsepower but very very heavy. Now the latest engine that we run here is the Mercury, it's 2.5 litre, about the same amount of horsepower but the weight is about a half of what the Evil Rule was. How has safety changed over the years? carbon fiber, wood, safety cell, piece of fiberglass, canopy, nothing open to the elements, five point harness, you're just sitting in the seat. The other big change, the airbag system. When this boat turns over, it lays flat on the water. When this boat turns over, the back of the boat goes under the water so the rescue people can get at the driver. Now I've raced in both types of these boats and when it comes down to safety and when it comes down to speed and overall balance of the boat, I know which one I'd like to be racing. Rough weather and severe conditions once again force the postponement of BRM qualifying to the morning of race day. Boats got their first one hour practice just 30 minutes before going out for a one hour qualifying session where all 20 drivers were out on the water trying to set their fastest times. The short half hour break between practice and qualifying proved crucial as teams worked frantically to try and fine tune their boats change engines or reconsider setups with a clock running against them. Team Sweden's Eric Stark broke an engine and was struggling to get it switched out in time. Could they get him out there? The teams that got out earliest benefited most from the relatively smooth conditions. Alex Corella set out early and set a blistering lap time of 48.98 seconds, followed by Philip Schiap with a 49.78 lap, while Sammy Salio also didn't disappoint up in third, just a tenth of a second behind Schiap. Ahmed Al Hamali was again fast up in the top five, but his victory teammate Sean Torrente crashed out on just his fourth lap. He caught an edge and barrel rolled. He still managed 15th position, but he was uncertain if his boat would be ready for the race. 
I was getting impatient because I feel the conditions were getting worse and we had changed engines and we're breaking it in. I just wanted to get a lap in. And so I pushed probably before I should have. And I don't know, it is what it is. Meanwhile, F1 Atlantic driver Duarte Benavente finished in eighth with a solid run, fresh off his podium performance in round one, but his teammate Grand Trask was truly exceptional, producing a brilliant run to take fifth spot. Yeah, we got out in the water early and got the chance to test a few props. Um, it's, there's a lot of rollers starting to come across the course now. We're happy with fifth if we can stay there. If not, you know, hopefully we don't get knocked down too much, but you know, it's not risk crashing the boat before the race. <laughs> Maverick F1's all-French lineup had trouble getting decent times in, De Guin managing 14th spot with his two teammates Jossam and Robar starting at the back. Blaze performance driver Francesco Cantando was disappointing, managing only 17th with his new boat, while his teammate Bartek Marsalek of Poland got in at 11th. With that blistering early lap under his belt, Alex Carrella sat it out, keeping an eye on the others, but nobody broke the 49th second time. Team Abu Dhabi driver Daniel Kamzi made up for his round one disappointment to go out and set a brilliant 49.90 lap time to move up into fourth, while his teammate and namesake Rashid Al Kamzi managed his best qualifying finish yet in F1 H2O in 13th position. Norwegian Emirates racing team driver Moritz Stromoy gave another dogged performance, tenaciously trying to find the clear spots that were few and far between so she could get some speed, and she managed a very good seventh place position. As the qualifying wound down, Team Sweden's struggles continued, with Jonas Andersson having a tough time barely managing 12th position. With just three minutes left in the session, his teammate Eric Stark finally appeared on the pontoon, hustling onto the water to try and get a lap time in anything. His team strap him in, send him out, and there is less than a minute left in the session. He goes all out, giving his all, only able to get a single lap in. And it's good, ninth position for Eric Stark, and after everything they've been through, it probably almost feels like they won it. The final qualifying result sees Alex Carella once again snatch pole position with that brilliant early lap. Chiap starts in second position with Celio in third beside him. Daniel Kamzi fourth and beside him is Grant Trask in fifth, Philip Roms tenth. Sean Torrente will be rallying up from 15th. We play good with the team to be in the water on the first three, four board. This was the key. Water was flat. I managed to make a good lap and was just waiting for 45 minutes, but I'm really happy for the board and for the team. We need this full position very hard. With the excitement of the day behind them, teams, crews, drivers and their families got to unwind and enjoy the local flavors of Evian, treated to a show that was out of this world. Grand Prix of France was about to get underway. 20 drivers, nine teams, doing battle on the treacherous waters of Lac Le Mans as the crowds gathered for the third consecutive F1 H2O Grand Prix in Evian. Victory team has fixed Torrente's boat. Now it's up to him to fight back from 15th. Uh, the race is the race, you know that, so we'll pass a bunch of boats, could put a good setup in it, the boat luckily is fine, so nothing really wrong with it. We don't have to change any parts really, so uh, see what we got, I think we'll be alright. Philip Schiap starts in second and wants to finally finish a race on Lac Le Mans. For sure, his second position on the grid is good and uh, if I make a good start, uh, I can get the, the victory, but uh, first we do make a safe start. Alex Carella wants to defend his Grand Prix of France title here. Can he make it two in a row? With the parade lap completed, the boats take up their starting positions on the pontoon. The race will be interesting. It's very challenging here in this condition to have the race, so let's see what's going to happen. Carella has pole position with Schiap and Celio to his right, which should make for a heck of an opening drag race to the commitment buoy. Murat Stromoy starts in seventh, followed by Benevente and Stark, and... <laughs> Oh! Anderson 
down in 12th, with Sean Torrente starting back in 15th amid four French rookies. A tough race ahead of him, and Cantando is also one to look out for at the back. UIM President Rafael Lecuyuli flies the UIM F1H2O flag as the countdown begins to race two of 2017. It's on. These boats can hit speeds of 100 kilometers an hour in four seconds as they shoot off the pontoon. Newcomer Beranger Robert struggles at the start, but it's a great start from pole sitter Alex Corella. Bartek Marcella gets hemmed in by Philip Roms and Jonas Anderson, the Polish Blaze performance driver struggling in the spray. Alex Corella has a masterful start to the race, holding off Schiap and Celio. Benevente outspeeds Moritz Stromoy to move up into seventh behind Ahmed Alhamali. At the back of the field, Mike Shimura sees Francesco Cantando leaving behind on the inside, coming around that first turn. Out in the lead, the perfect start for Team Abu Dhabi ace Alex Corella, opening his lead over Schiap as Celio and Al Kamzi lock horns for third place. Further back, Jonas Anderson has a good start too, moving up from 12th on the pontoon to 10th as he passes Marshalek and Roms and moves up on his teammate Eric Stark to his port side. Behind Corella and Schiap, the battle heats up between Celio and Tani Alkamzi. Celio keeping the Team Abu Dhabi veteran off his back for now, but Alkamzi also has someone on his tail, Grant Trask of F1 Atlantic team. The Australian driver cutting in on the inside, trying to sneak into fourth, but Alkamzi closes the Aussie off at the turn, holding on to fourth. Back in the lower end of the pack, Sean Torrente begins his climb up the field, overhauling another Team Abu Dhabi driver, Rashid Al Kamzi, to move up a spot into 14th position. Alex Carella opening that lead to over four seconds over Schiap, Celio in third, behind him, Dani Al Kamzi in fourth. Stromoy chased by Benevente, doing battle for seventh as Jonas Anderson comes up behind them. Anderson comes around the outside of Stromoy and Benevente, turning this into a three-way showdown, but it's another Team Sweden boat on the inside who catches them all off guard as Eric Stark sneaks through and nabs seventh position, passing Stromoy and Benevente in one fell swoop. Further back, Torrente continues his surge up the ranks, this time taking Cedric de Guin on the inside while closing out Marshalek on the outside. Then he chases down Philip Roms as the man from Miami moves into 11th position, setting his sights on Moritz Stromoy. Torrente moving up behind Stromoy, and Stromoy has held the American off in plenty of races and through many a duel, but this time she doesn't have the speed to fend off Torrente. The victory number four boat moves up another notch into the top 10 on just the second lap. In a battle between two French drivers, the new CTI CF1 Shenzhen China driver Peter Morin overtakes Cedric de Guin. Great racing from the former ruined 24-hour champion. No changes in the top six. Corella looking very comfortable with nearly six seconds of a lead over Shiap. Celio third, Alcamzi fourth, Trask fifth, then Al Hamali in sixth. Torrente continuing his incredible climb as he tries to get past the wily Portuguese driver. But Benevente doesn't have what it takes as he watches the blue victory boat speed away ahead of him. Torrente sets his sights now on the two Swedish red boats, Anderson and Stark, who are sure to prove tougher nuts to crack, fast drivers with good setups and a lot of experience between them. But Torrente is very aggressive and desperate for points here in round two, and you can be sure he'll be laying it all on the line, throwing caution to the wind. Back in the field, Francesco Cantando zooms past Cedric de Guin, building momentum in his new boat, moving up into 15th. Up in the lead, it's all smooth sailing for Alex Corella. She up nowhere in sight behind the Italian. Grant Trask chasing de Guin, and he barrel rolls before that tight corner. What a shame for Trask, who is going strong in fifth position. Here it is on the replay. He snags a trough, hooks it, and goes over. He's unhurt as the Osprey rescue team get him out, but it's a big blow to F1 Atlantic team. Meanwhile, Cedric de Guin of Maverick Racing Team comes in to try and change setup before the race commences, but they're losing precious time. Yellow flag, the boats wait for the restart. <laughs> up the race.
races back on. The yellow flag bunch up proves a godsend for Shiap and Celio who go neck and neck behind Corella. Sammy Celio does it. Sammy Celio moves into second position ahead of Shiap. Further back, Sean Torrente also has a brilliant green flag restart in ninth, jumping four spots into fifth position. Shiap's woes continue as he's now taken on by Ahmed Al Hamali, with Al Hamali's teammate coming up behind them, turning this into a real firefight. Torrente has the speed on the outside as he first passes Ahmed Al Hamali and then gives chase to Shiap. Jonas Anderson is also closing in on Al Hamali, battling through the spray to catch the Emirati. Torrente does it. Torrente flies past a struggling Shiap on the outside as Al Hamali locks horns with Shiap. Shiap has the inside advantage, Al Hamali has the speed, and then Stark throws himself into the mix along with Anderson. A titanic four way battle unfolds between Shiap, Al Hamali, Stark, and Anderson. Al Hamali and the two Swedes move past the struggling Shiap, and there appears to be a problem with Shiap. The Frenchman slows and falls back as the two red boats chase the blue victory boat ahead. The two Team Sweden teammates go into the turn neck and neck and they nearly collide, but Anderson has it. Jonas Anderson beats Stark and sets his sights on Ahmed Al Hamali. Daniel comes, he senses trouble now as he sees the red boats in his rearview mirror, and Anderson continues the pace to pass the Team Abu Dhabi driver with Stark following behind them. Finally, Cedric de Guin's boat is ready to go back out. He loses three positions, bumped down to 18th from 15th, but at least he can keep racing, and there's still a lot of laps left. Out in the lead, Alex Carella rebuilds a four-second lead, this time over Celio in second position, Torrente in third with Al Hamali in fourth, followed by Jonas Anderson in fifth and Al Kamzi in sixth. Philip Schiap is back on the pontoon as his team works frantically to try and get him back out looking to see what's wrong, checking all the connections, the spark plugs, the fuel lines. This is the third consecutive race on Lac Le Mans that Schiap has experienced a breakdown, and this time he at least wants to finish the race and salvage what he can, but it does not look good. It's no good, his race is over, the curse of Evian continues for the world champion. Trouble also for Blaze driver Bartek Marsalek, his race ends in frustration in Evian. Just 19 laps left, Corella keeps building that lead over Celio, who's under pressure from Torrente in third. The American looking to snatch second spot from the Finn, but the Mad Croc Baba Ace is driving a solid race, looking to build on his excellent runner-up showing in round one in Portimao. On lap 30, Emirates racing driver Mike Shimura's race comes to an end. The German is towed out of the water. In the lead, Corella loses none of his momentum as he laps Francesco Cantando, who's doing well in his new place boat, Cantando in 10th position. Further back, Moritz Stromoy keeping up the good pace in 8th as the laps run out. The final lap, Alex Curla tries to bring the boat in safely through to the checkered flag to avoid any last second disasters. Can he do it? Corella does it! He hangs in there for a second straight Grand Prix of France win. Alex Carilla is the champion at Evian for a second year in a row. Sammy Celio with another runner-up finish, and Torrente completes a brilliant race to move up from 15th and get a podium spot hey! in third. Hey! Carilla leads start to finish for another pole race clean sweep in Evian. Finally, we are back after one difficult year of my life. I'm more than happy, I'm uh... Woo! That was the best restart I've ever had in my life. My man RJ got a good jump and uh, took a big risk down there with Jonas and man, it worked. It just, it just worked, it was awesome. The race results, Corella, Celio Torrente, the top three, Al Hamily bringing in fourth for victory team. Stark manages a good seventh place ahead of Stromoy in eighth and points for Benevente and Cantando. Abu Dhabi dominates the team standings at the end of round two with Mad Croc Baba just behind and CTIC F1 Shenzhen China in third. And a 3-4 finish for victory shoots them up to fourth. It was a great drive, great race, great radio man, and the team worked their ass off. I got the boat. Oh, wet for him this morning, I was swimming. 
and uh, we just kept working, man. We just kept grinding, and we'll go to the next one. We're really fast. I just got to not screw it up in qualifying. Hard race to fighting and changing the guys in the front, and unfortunately, Alex didn't do any mistakes and was clear race, and uh, I didn't had the space to overtake him. So second, need to be happy leading the championship if our calculation is right. So it's great. This victory is for sure for all my team. They work like crazy for one entire month after Portugal, and uh, we did it. Uh, one Poland victory is perfect for the start of the season, and uh, and for sure now we go with a good spirit to the next round in China. That second runner-up result in two races moves Sami Celio to the top of the world standings at the end of round two. One point clear of Corella, with Schiap dropping down to third and Benevente in fourth. Torrente relieved to be in the top five with that result, but the man of the day is Alex Corella. The UIM F1 H2O flag was passed on from Evian to Harbin, which would host the Grand Prix of China in August. That completes another thrilling Grand Prix in Evian. See you in Harbin for round three of the 2017 UIM F1 H2O World Championship.